Hello, everyone. This is Realtor Linda Peltz. Today, I'm here with Scott Crum, and he's going to tell you all about his business. Take it away, Scott. Well, hello. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate it. Um, I've been doing solar here in the Valley for almost 11 years, and I work with a lot of real estate companies. I come in and I speak at their training meetings and their um, different meetings they have to help the other realtors be up to speed on you know, all the products that you guys have to deal with. You guys deal with so many different things when, when it comes to selling a home. And solar has changed so much in the last 11 years that I've been doing it that anytime you go to a home that has solar, you often don't know what that means. No. Uh, is it a, yeah, is it, it an own lease? System? It can be owned. It can be a PP, what do they call it? PPG uh, or something? A PPA. <laughs> PPA, PPA, I mean, yeah. and, and all the paperwork's different too. That's what people don't really understand. So if exactly. I ask you for a solar contract, that's why I'm looking to see what the heck are we dealing with here? <laughs> right, it's because you want to be able to accurately give information to the potential buyers of what they're getting and what the advantages are. If it's an owned system, the house should sell for more money because it's an owned system. On average, that increases uh, the home value about $20,000 here in, in California. And they need to know, hey, this is going to save you, on average, this much money a year with this right. system. You know, um, if the house normally uses, you know, $300 worth of electricity a month, that's a $3,600 savings. You know, that changes your budgeting, right? If it's um, a older lease system, they may have to qualify for it. The old ones, they, they may still have to qualify, which could be a problem when selling a home. Those are mostly gone now, but there are still some of those out there. And they need to know, hey, there's going to be an additional credit check here. Would that affect your abil ability to buy this house? And now you're getting power for $150 a month, of what's worth $300. So we're saving you about $1,800 a month. Or it's a newer lease that comes with... Uh, uh, just sign and take it. There's no credit check. It just moves over to your name when you take the home and it's going to save you on average this much money. Um, things like that. Those are a lot of questions that come up. And, you know, most realtors have so much on their plate. They can't learn everything. They, they have an idea of what's going on, but they don't have time to know everything. Well, that's no. where I come in as, you know, as the expert will at least help answer those questions. Definitely. Now, do you see in the future uh, a lot of these resell I mean, I know the new homes, it's mandated that they have solar. Do you see at some point that these resell homes, you know, that's already grandfathered in as far as when we go to sell them, they're going to have to have something? Yeah. So the, the the law that was changed in 2020 where all new construction has to have solar is one of the most ridiculously dumb laws we have in California, though we have a lot to choose from in that category. Um, what the problem is, is that these builders are putting in a micro system, usually it's around a, a three kilowatt system, sometimes even smaller, and no battery. Well, the rules have changed on how the power companies work with us. And if you're putting a solar system in today, you need a battery. It's the only way it works. Um, the, the terms NIM uh, 2 and NIM 3 are, are important factors. When the selling a home as well, if somebody has locked in on net metering 2 for their um, exchange rate with the power company, that's to their advantage. And so if somebody's buying a house that's going to get a solar system with net metering two, that's a that's a bigger win than buying a house with net metering three. You know, so those are once again important factors. The newer home construction is definitely going to be a problem. A lot of those homes are going to have to have additional systems put on to meet people's needs. Well, and, I, and I'm even seeing it like on the homes that are older and has the systems, you know, they don't always aren't always adequate for the home. Even though I, I remember putting solar on my house and I had to fight to get them to, you know, build it big enough for the actual house. I'm right now it's a huge home and it's just me living in there. So my bills are down. Right. But if my kids decide to come back or like right now I had a daughter and a grandson move in. I mean, OK, my energy use is going to go up here. So I had to fight with them. You know, no, this is a big home. I expect it overbuilt, you know. I get it. I'm not using it right now, but you know, at some point, you know, it will be used. So exactly. When I sit down with a, a potential solar customer, I talk about that. You know, not what we're doing today, but what we think we're going to do tomorrow. Are we at an electric car? Are we going to have kids? Is this a short-term property for you or long-term? Is this your forever house, or do you think you're going to move in the next three to seven years? 
These are all type of questions I like to ask the potential buyer so that I can put them in the proper package that actually meets their needs the best. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know, not all solar cells can do those things. They don't take the time to learn what would actually be best for the, the homeowner in the long run. Mm -hmm. Now, when they go to add, okay, so we're talking about homes that don't have quite adequate systems, and yet they're on that, what you call it, NIM2, NIM2. which is the lower rate with PG&E, correct? The better rate, yeah. How do you add to the system without increasing that rate going into the newer, whatever you call it, NIM3 or whatever pricing? Yeah. So there are some ways of doing that. There are some ways to tie in a solar system and stay on the NIM2 program. Um, so that's not always available, but it is often available for people who have solar. So what, basically what we do is we bring in a separate second system with a battery. It becomes the system that supplies the power dramatically uh, immediately during the day. In other words, uh, you turn a light, turn the TV on at two o'clock in the afternoon, it's the power from that second solar system that's running that first. And the original solar system is sending additional power back to the grid because you're getting fair value for it on NIM2, but on NIM3, you're not. So there's there's programs able to help people do that. We look at what they're trying to accomplish, how much power they need, and then we can build a system that will actually keep them in the best uh, at, at the best advantage. Mm-hmm. Now, do you see at some point when I go to sell a home that doesn't have solar that they're going to require that somebody put solar on it? Or before I don't know solar? about that. I mean, with with our government, it's always possible they they do dumb things. At this point, I've not heard anything of like that. Um, no rumors in the works or anything. No, I, I no. see it kind of coming with the way they kind of control our life, and and I'm seeing out yes. social media. I don't know if you are, but I'm seeing a whole lot of complaints about you know, um, oh my God, my PG&E bill just doubled <laughs> and I'm paying like $1,800 this month. Where do they think I'm going to get that kind of money, you know? or <laughs> It's crazy. I'm, I have a, a house I'm, I'm meeting with on Friday and their electric bill, and this is a little, small, little home, but it's an older home, so it's not very efficient. Their electric bill for July was $1,100. Yeah. And and this is a, a small, young family that that's that's not in their budget. A matter of fact, if grandma wasn't paying the bills, they couldn't afford it. Um, but I'm going to be able to come in. I'm going to cut that in half, probably. Um, what's What the problem is, is, you know, the government always has a tendency to mess things up. We try to stay away from them as much as we can. The power companies have a lot of power. They have a lot of lobbyists. They're changing the rules to their advantage always. If you own a home and you don't have solar, you're, you're paying a bill that's never going to go away. There's no end date. And it's going to go up every single year. It never, ever ends. Why would you ever do that? It's a, it's a foolish choice because there's so many options to, to solve that problem for you or at least help that problem. If you are buying a home um, and it's uh, you're, you're out looking for homes, you should be looking for homes that already have solar that are in uh, better programs if they're available to you. And then if not, if it doesn't have solar, that's the first thing you should be looking for. You should be asking the buyer, the sellers, hey, can we see your last 12 months of electric use so we can see what your average bill is so we can plan, we can decide, hey, we need to put in this size system that's going to cost us this much money or lease it um, so that we can meet these needs. These are great questions and um, the buyers need to know that. And once again, when somebody's buying a home, they got a list this long of things they're trying to you know, figure out, right? School districts and um, you know, and, uh, hundreds of things. The electric bill often gets gets lost. They forget that, oh, oh yeah. there's the little bill. Yeah. Just the maintenance um, on the home overwhelms a lot of people. And 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 I try to explain it, especially to my new buyers, you know, that's never owned a home before. There's going to be continual maintenance forever. And there's no perfect home out there. It's just what maintenance do you want to be able to deal with over the years? Because it's coming. There is no home that you you just don't ever do anything to. <laughs> right, right. The life that you're, you own it, you know. Pipes need to be fixed or leaks or you know, roofs have to be changed rent eventually. Yeah, you got to keep yep. up with those roofs. You know, you got your HVAC. Well, solar's just kind of one on the list, that, and it does. I think right at this particular time, it does have a tendency to get overlooked. You know, so I did and see like one the other day we looked at, and I thought that was interesting that somebody had taken solar off of it. You can see the the brackets. Punchers. 
bracket, mm -hmm. bracket still on the roof. And it's like, why would anyone take it off? I'm guessing it was an older system or something. I mean, I don't know. I don't know why it would be taken off I've, or whatever. I'll be but... honest. I've never seen that. That's, that's not. I know that was the first one I've seen. I'm like, <laughs> put, put more panels on top of that. You know, the thing of it is, is that, you know, we're, we're all trying to make, make it work every month, right? Every week, trying to make sure everything goes smooth. We have so much on our plate. If we can simplify things, it helps, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know, what I do is, right, well, I, I educate. Like, most people don't realize that California, we have some of the highest rates in electricity in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. Here in Fresno, you're paying about 45 to 50 cents a watt. Um, you know, I have family in South Carolina paying 13 cents. Our prices are going up dramatically. So we have to we have to plan for those things. Mm -hmm. If right now about 24% of the homes in California have solar, most states have less than 2%. You know, they're way behind us. They're, they're, they're slowly catching up because their rates are going up. But if you own a home in California and you don't have solar, you're starting to become in the minority. I even do tons of rental properties. Now it's becoming such an advantage because of the write-offs and the depreciation that um, I'm doing three rental properties right now for a customer. Well, um, so there's California has ways. such an advantage over some of the other states with the, the mild weather. Right. And the yeah. lots of sun, you know, I know I am originally from the Midwest and they deal with a lot of hail and, you know, heavy snow packed and different things like that, that we just don't deal with out here. So what excuse do we really have? I have heard, I have heard a couple complaints from people. Oh, well, it's damaging to the birds. I, I haven't really heard that other than what you're telling me, you know, what I've they're been telling doing this me. For... Yeah. I've so never I've heard that. And I'm like, years. you don't want solar because it's, damages the birds <laughs> how does it damage birds i have so, no idea <laughs> i don't either my matter of fact birds have a tendency to want to put nest under it and use it as a protection though you know you don't usually don't want that so we'll put what's called bird netting around there if you have a bird issue about one in eight houses have a bird issue so we'll put bird netting to keep birds from getting underneath of it but it doesn't hurt birds i mean there's nothing there there's no never, radiation. In, There's in nothing all there. my so years of owning it, I've never had a bird bird issue, but I get it. You know, until you walk in another man's shoes, you have no clue. But <laughs> it's like, well, Wind I haven't kill birds. any, and I haven't heard any anything like that. So, <laughs> well, windmills—that's the one. You know, we have these windmills on the you know the northern California, the the big windmill farms. They mm -hmm. do kill birds. You know, that actually is an issue. Windmills kill lots of birds. Um, solar, no. Solar is one of the it, solar is really nice. It just uh, there there's really very very small maintenance you know knock the dust off there's nothing really to replace once in a great while the inverter goes out and i have to repair that on average once every 20 to 25 years besides that it just sits there and works most people once they put it on the roof they completely forget about it mm -hmm. um yeah it, it, it's it, it's a money-making process for the homeowner it's they're always going to come out ahead even on uh, on some of the older deals that weren't that good it's still an advantage. They're still saving something. Yeah. Well, and even on the older deals, I know like most of the leases or the, what do you call it? PPAs, they can be bought out. So, yes. you know, I mean, at some point, say you do come into whatever, a little bit of money or whatever, you can buy that out. And then it's just simply like you say, a money producing for the home, right? You, you've paid that lease off and and that system's yours. Okay, maybe it's not quite adequate, but it's still producing money for you, you know, and you 100%. can always add more to it or something to where it pays for itself. I know I have some of my, my buyers, my clients, you know, they love it when they get those homes that, you know, has a system that's adequate. They're getting money back from pg and &E. <laughs> you know, the system's paid off, they have the batteries, whatever, you know, and it's like, oh, yeah, I just had a credit from pg and &E of $2,000 or whatever. It was. <laughs> so it's making them and money course, at that point. Yeah, pg &E keeps changing those rules to their advantage as well, because that's what they're always going to do. But it's always better than doing nothing. Solar always is, a, is an advantage. And what we do is we sit down with, um, well, I sit down with realtors and help educate them and ask the right questions. And then if they have customers that need help, I'll have to sit down with them and do the same thing. Educate them on the possibilities. You mentioned that you wish you would have gone with a bigger system. When I sit down and talk to people, I talk about those things. What is your future? What does it look like? Because if you're using this much power today, let's not build a system that uses this. Let's build a system that use, makes this much power so that we can cover our bases. You know, 
And I know a lot of companies that I talked to way back in the day when I was putting it on, it was like, no, no, you just built. No, I want it overbuilt. I want it built over by at least 20 percent because I don't know what it is. It's a big house. I may have to sell it here in a few years. I don't know. I mean, all my kids have moved out. I get it. But I don't know what the the future holds. You know, like you say, maybe I want to get a, a you know, plug in car, electric car, maybe one of my kids has to move back in, you know, COVID hit. And it was like, Oh, my God, I'm so right. happy that because right, I was home every day. I was like, I'm so exactly. happy that, that I, I forced the issue and I wouldn't go with the company that wouldn't cooperate with me and overbuild it a yep. little bit. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's it's sad that some of the salespeople out there in the solar are younger, newer, don't know those things. They're just trying to make a sell. They forget that our job is actually to service our customer, to slow down, ask the right questions, meet their needs. Mm -hmm. You know, if I do this, my job properly, they're going to be happy with me. And if it ever comes up down the road, they're going to say, oh, yeah, Scott did a good job. You know, I'm highly likely to get a recommendation. But if you come well, in Scott, and he knows the job, answer, <laughs> he exactly. did a great job. I'm happy. <laughs> kind of like our, the kind of like us as realtors, you know, exactly. our business thrives off, off referrals. So it's like, call Linda, you're happy. You got all the answers. 100%. The majority of my business is referral based. Mm -hmm. I get most of my business and I get phone calls and tech messages from friends and past customers on a regular basis. Hey, my sister's looking, my brother's looking, my neighbor's looking, you know, um, you know, I get this all the time and I'm like, okay, let me see what I can do to help. Um, you know, but if, if we go on the idea that our job is to serve first, actually try to help the people get the best overall package, then we're going to do it right. Sometimes you have to say no. And that this, I had a story years ago, I had a customer who just really did not need solar. It was a poor, poor choice for them. It made no sense. They had a bad house for it. They didn't have a really small bill. And I told him, no, you, you don't need solar. And, and they looked at me and they said, well, aren't you here to sell me solar? And I said, no, I'm, I'm here to answer your your questions correctly. And, and solar is a what bad you really choice. Need. <laughs> yeah. I'm and, here and to the guy, the, you. <laughs> it, really, the husband, the husband looked at me, he goes, this doesn't make sense. He goes, I would think you'd be trying to sell me solar. And I said, I would if I thought it helped you, but it won't help you. And he goes, well, I have two other people who will sell it to me. I said, I know they will because they're just looking for a commission check. I appreciate they're trying to make a living, but if they can live with themselves, that's on them. I can't. The answer is no, solar is a bad choice for you. Now, I've only had to do that once or twice. It's very rare, but the truth is the truth. Tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. I uh, kind of deal with that a lot of times, you know, when the people just really can't afford a house, right? You know, I mean, I'm not a lender, but that's my number one thing, you know, get over to a lender and let's find out how it's going to impact your future. And it are, can you afford it? Do you, you know, have the down payment, all that stuff. So that's always step one is figure out the financial. Is it going to help you? Is it going to be a hardship to where you can't pay for it? You know, <laughs> is it better right. for you to rent for four more years and you practice putting that money into savings that you should be putting into for your house. I, I, I get to deal with that pretty much on a day, on a weekly basis. I have to tell, I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's not for you right now. I mean, these are the steps you need to go to, to get to that point. But right now it's just not, not going to happen. <laughs> but, I just did an install for solar, just got completed a week and a half ago. And this is a family that I've been talking to for two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And they had some issues with credit. And this, they couldn't get a loan. They couldn't get a lease. They just had it. And But we would we would keep talking. And I would tell them, okay, I'm going to keep it in my system. I'm going to reach out to you periodically. And I did. And I did. And I did. I kept telling them, you know, build your credit, build your credit. And about two months ago, um, they reached out to me. Hey, Scott, we just we just got a credit report. We're, we're able to pass the 650 now. Can we do this? So let's go. We sit down, got it done. It just got installed. They're so happy. I stayed with them for two and a half years of, of, of just passive, you know, I'm here for you when yeah. you're ready. You know, any questions. My job was to serve them. And right. You know, have you looked at the steps to, you know, get where we need to go? I mean, I are you still interested? Have you given up? Or, you know, you're right. You just kind of stay in contact. You want to be encouraging, but you do want them to 
meet with success and it not be their downfall. I mean, that is not my goal as a realtor is put you in right. a house that's going to be your downfall because you're going to have right. a life of misery in a couple, three years here. I want you to be able to go on and find some sort of happiness in your decision and be content with whatever you have. So I but, always yeah. say when I'm out and about, because I'm a pretty social person, I go out to live music and different things quite a bit. When I see my customers, they come up, they shake my hand, they give me a hug, they buy me a drink. You know, I've saved them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I've never had a customer walk up to me at any location and say, ah, there's that guy who got me for solar, man. I wish I would have never met. I've never heard that. I've never had that happen. To the, I mean, to my knowledge, all of my customers are incredibly happy. Um, th that makes for a nice life, you know, that I'm, I know that I'm actually helping people. Well, that's my goal, too, is, is I'm here to protect you. I'm here to make sure, you know, we get what you perceive as you want, but you understand the impact of it and understand, you know, sometimes you got to maybe cut back just a little bit and maybe go for the first time home versus the, the forever home right in the beginning and practice until you get the hang of this. <laughs> so yeah. your particular case, you can kind of go straight for the, no, this is what fits the house. This is what you need. <laughs> I sometimes have to tone them down just a little bit, you know, depending on their circumstances and everybody, I can have two identical homes, but the, the circumstances are very, very different. And, right. and the transaction is going to be very different and their qualifications are going to be different. Everything happens differently in their life. So it's, it's kind of interesting. I, I have to learn to adjust very, very quick in my industry. So it's like, okay, What's wait a minute. Students? Because the rules have changed here in California about how solar re reacts with the power companies so much, I have a lot of different solutions. So when I sit down, I don't have a preconceived idea of what I'm offering. I ask a lot of questions. Is Are they a cash buyer? Are they a purchase buyer with a loan? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be one of loans through my company or are they going to get their own loan? Are they looking Makes at some difference. form of a... Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, are they looking more like a lease uh, or a PPA? What is, you know, getting solar, you have a huge tax advantage, you're getting a 30% tax credit. Well, that's wonderful if you pay taxes, but if you don't, that's a waste of money. You, you, so I, there's a lot of questions I'm finding out. You know, if you're maybe you're um, getting retirement and your your tax liability is minute, mm -hmm. purchasing is probably a bad choice. Probably a purchase, a, a PPA or a lease is going to put more money in your pocket. And a lot of people, especially older people, they're like, oh, no, I only want to, I only want to own. I only want to own. I, I get that. But if that's a bad choice mathematically, should we at least uh, look at both options and find out what puts the most money in your pocket? You know, well, and like questions. I said, most of the leases you can buy out eventually like an own system. It's just that it, they it, it cost, I don't know if they cost necessarily less, but it's the different structure of it. <laughs> Yeah. And they also end. Leases have an end date. And here's the good, here's the little secret that people don't like to know that they would say, well, yeah, what happens then? Well, the lease company comes and offers you an, an additional lease. And what did you do is you tell them no. And then they have to come take it off your roof and replace everything as is, as was. And guess how many lease companies want to do that? None. None. <laughs> so they're not going to come take it off. They're going to try to sell it to you for a dollar and get their liability out of the way. They've made their money over over the 25 years. You saved a bunch exactly. of money and now you have an own system. Own so, system. So it, it's just yeah. there again, the system that we we or you as a as the professional puts them into <laughs> to get the end result of what they need for their life. So <laughs> exactly. Hey Scott, uh, how do they contact you? How do they get a hold of you and how do they uh you know find yeah, out yeah. all this well, information? So my, my cell phone's on 24-7, so I always answer unless I'm with a customer. My phone number is 559-906-8163. Feel, feel free to reach out to me anytime, seven days a week. If you want to email me, I have a really incredibly simple email address. It's scottcrumb at hotmail.com. So S-C-O-T-T-C-R-U-M-B at hotmail.com. I've had it for so many years, I can't never get rid of it. I've had it since <laughs> Hotmail was brand spanking new. So I'm really easy to get a hold of. I respond quickly. The only time I don't answer is if I'm uh, uh, on a hot date or with a customer. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, we'll go ahead and include the information down below, everyone. This is Realtor Linda Peltz. I am here for all you and your friends' real estate needs and questions. Just give us a call. Give us a text. If if you need me to get you over to Scott, just give me a call. Give me a text, and I'll, I'll get you the information. 
but please like our channel and I will catch on the next one. My license number is 019976770. Everyone have a great day.